So it's been a little while since I've done uh, done something that I called a, a Z rant, which is basically one of those uh, you know one of those uh, videos where I, I get on a topic and I just sort of share my honest sort of thoughts about something. So in this one, I want to share something I hear, frankly, too often, and it's uh, you know an investor that reaches out or you know a friend or family or, or someone who basically goes, hey, like what you guys did, uh, you know, congrats on your retirement, all that stuff. Uh, but at, uh, but I'm going to wait to the next downturn. Uh, I hear this so regularly. It, it, it's to me, it's almost like, you know, fingernails on a chalkboard because it, because I can sort of see the future. And I just thought I would record one of these videos because I, hopefully it helps my friends and family who are saying this and, and, and really sort of assess what, um, what I think when I hear that. So as always, we go through the goals. Uh, we'll just review what I hear. Um, really talk about you know, I, I invested through this uh, this downturn that everybody's talking about. But it, it, it shouldn't be lost on anyone that I invested for a decade before it or eight years before it and, you know, six or seven years after it. It's not like the only thing we did is stockpile cash and, and wait wait for this, you know, two-year period. That's just not how it works. Uh, then, you know, it's very different now. And... Um, you know, I sort of want to highlight why it's different. Maybe sort of speculate what that means uh, for the future, and then um, why I think it's it's dangerous for folks that say they just want to wait. And just sort of share what I believe. Okay. So again, we sort of talk about this uh, again, sort of to put this in context. This is typically from new investors, and what I mean by that is they don't own anything yet, right? They they probably have some cash. Um, they know real. They 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 get that the stock market's not the thing. And they want to have some rentals. Uh, they want to be, you know, get, get the um, get the cash flow, right? That's what I hear all the time. So I want some cash flow, positive cash flow. Um, but this is often something that comes up during the conversation, and it um, it hurts me. So, you know, it's I'm going to wait for the next downturn and then buy something. Um, again, just saying that that hurts and makes me cringe. So let's just talk about it so I can get it on my chest. First, I you know I. I understand that it feels good to say that. I, you know, nobody wants to be that person who bought at the uh, at the peak. Nobody buying anything wants to do that, right? So, um, I I get it, but it's um, it's probably a, it's it's in my opinion a very dangerous statement. You know, so you know, for example, what if the next down cycle is ten years away? Um, what if the next down cycle is you know a very slow leak, maybe a, a a top on prices so that you know appreciation just stalls for years. Also, what what have you lost by waiting? Right, the next down cycle is not going to be this. Certainly not going to be this violent explosion like the last one was, and, and we'll go over why I can say that with pretty good certainty uh, here in a minute. And then lastly, um, I sort of get a chuckle out of this that that everybody sort of thinks they're going to be this ultra aggressive buyer uh, in the next down cycle. And as someone who can, you know, truthfully say they were aggressive and bought everything they could, um, I got to tell you that there were lots of people that had more money than, than we did to, to deploy and they were just sitting on their hands. They were scared. It was a scary time, right? Think about it. Your, your house or your rentals or whatever gets whacked in half. Uh, jobs are insecure, you know, all these things. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying you're going to wait for the next down cycle, and you're going to be just this this buyer. I got to call BS because I doubt it. I think most people that are waiting today will wait in the future because oh, my job's not certain, or my wife or husband lost his, or my next door neighbor is this or that, or it's just you no. Know, you're not going to buy anything, right? So, um, it's just it's just what what I believe. So the, why, what's different this time, and why can I confidently say the next you know next downturn is not going to be this abrupt you know fifty percent off sale? First, it's all about the financing, right? There's there's strict financing. There's none of these things that were called liar loans or no doc loans or you know, you know people making twenty grand saying they're making two hundred grand. It's just none of that nonsense is going on. Also today, I don't know. Last time I read, it's well over ninety five percent of loans being written today are fixed. And what, what got a lot of people in trouble last time was the adjustable or the term, right? They had these uh, these loans that had 
two percent interest rate or one percent interest rate for two years, and then it reset to twelve or nine or you know eight, whatever. So what worked with a one percent loan it doesn't work with an eight or nine percent loan, right? You 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 create what I've called an alligator. If you remember that, it's a you know a property cash flows at one percent, but it's not going to cash flow at eight. That's an alligator because it's going to consume money every month, and that's what got people in trouble. Also, rates uh, a lot of people have rates below four um, percent. They're not in a rush to sell, right? It's uh, you know they're not they're not in a rush to sell a four percent you know property they have four percent on and go buy one they have six percent on. You know, fi- with with the ri- rising financing and all the fixed rate debt on here, I think one of the things we're seeing is sellers aren't selling because um, they don't want to get that interest rate shock. Um, so there's a lot of people that could be could be sellers that maybe just turn their owner occupants into rentals because they cash flow for heaven's sakes. Um, people are cash flow positive today. It's um, it's not some Excel ninja you know numbers. It's like no money shows up every month and you know it's it's what they have. So not going to be in a rush to sell. What the real thing is and what was the difference is there's no forced sellers. I just don't see a wave of forced sellers. What caused the fifty percent off sale? You know, last time was the banks became forced sellers because a wave of people got hit by the resets. They decided not to pay. They took the properties back and, you know, hundreds or thousands of units were coming on days or weeks, depending on how you want to count it. And the buyers disappeared. So the only thing to do in that market says economics is to lower the price. And I just don't see a wave of forced sellers, right? It, it, real estate's so individual that I just don't see a big wave coming. Um, and that's really different, right? There's no wave of resets that, that sort of hit in April of 2020 or whatever. Um, last time you could see the resets coming because it was just so, so popular that everybody was doing it. Right? And then, you know, you could actually calculate how many people were going to reset in April and then how many resets in May and, it got ugly and got ug- kept getting ugly for a long time. So, again, this might sound harsh, and if so, I apologize. I'm, I'm just doing this to because I care about you all, and um, hopefully um, hopefully you can stop saying it. <laughs> I don't want to hear you're going to wait for the next down cycle, right? You can say you're going to learn a market, you want to do some research. All that stuff's good, right? I spent well over a year before I bought anything, but, but don't say you're just going to wait because I... Uh, I'm, Hopefully by now it's clear that I don't I don't think you're gonna ever buy anything. Uh, I think you're gonna have to wait a while. I sp- I actually suspect the next down cycle, if you want to even call it that, is just gonna be a slow leak, um, and and really it's likely not gonna be what traditionally is called a downturn. It's gonna be a you know a, a you know less than one percent appreciation or something like that, right? You don't have the wave of forced sellers coming on to to dent uh, prices. And then, you know, I don't think you're going to buy anything. That's that's the reality of, of why this that quote hurts me. Um, I think waiting what could be five to ten years. Uh, I can promise you this. Your life's going to be different. Um, and other things are going to be important. And you're going to have lost experiences. And prices will be different. And the, the simple, the, the simple, my simple belief is most of the people that tell me they're going to wait for the next down cycle. Um, I don't think you're going to buy anything. I think all your belief will wash away, life will get in the way, and um, you will not ever buy anything. That's that's really why I wanted to create this video because um, I don't think that I think that's bad. So um, I think learning your market is key. You you have to do that. Um, you never can just buy willy nilly. Uh, the teams are important, right? You got to have a you know people that have full time jobs need to rely on a team and, and understanding what what that is. Uh, also, I believe you live where you want. Uh, but you have to invest where the numbers make sense. And, and this is for the folks in the high price markets. Um, you know, hopefully you've never taken anything from me. And, you know, for example, I live in Mountain View or the Silicon Valley. And um, I would never try to invest here. It's just the numbers are ridiculous. Uh, but I love living here. And, um, you know, for the folks down in, in L.A. and the like, you, you, you love living there. Uh, but it's, um, it's tough to make the numbers work. So that's not what I'm saying. You, know, you got to find a market that makes sense. And, and again, I get it, right? Life's hard. You never have enough time to do everything. You're very, very busy. Um, you know, maybe instead of being a landlord or buying some rentals, um, maybe you should think about being the bank, right? And finding that investor that has the experience and the time and 
and track record to show, um, you know, that there's uh, there's you know profit to be made in real estate. And you know, shoot, if you can just get you know so, some interest income and and maybe get part of the um, part of the upside if you're investing in the right program, um, you know, it's a good thing. So um, you know, again. You don't have to say you're going to be a, a landlord and build this big re rental portfolio. Um, you know, maybe it's just a maybe it's a better option just to be the bank, given how busy uh, you are. So, uh, hopefully, this uh, made sense. Hopefully, I wasn't too harsh. Um, have a great day. Lastly, if you uh, like this uh, video, do me a favor hit uh, hit the like button. Uh, I see now that we're actually up to 102 subscribers, so thank you very much. Uh, do me a favor and send this video around if you uh, if you like what's on it. Uh, if you have anybody saying they're going to wait, I'd love you to send this video to them. Uh, and with that, uh, I will say uh, have a great day one more time. Thanks.